I realized that I had enough uh, stuff to make another update, so I'll make one now. I have uh, four Blu-rays and four DVDs actually, so uh, I'm gonna start with two Top Gear DVDs. We got Top Gear Apocalypse and Top Gear at the Movies. Watch this one um, a little while back, and um, this is fun. It says here the definitive guide to motoring in an, in a post-apocalyptic world, which obviously <laughs> it's not. It's just it's just entertainment. It's just an excuse, or you know, excuse. It's just a, a kind of a loose theme to, to to try various entertaining challenges in a way. It's sort of along the lines of the Top Gear challenges, you know, in in a way, in a sense. It's fun. It's it's entertaining, uh, and uh, I mean, these have pretty high budgets. I mean, <laughs> they they gotta have some uh, high budgets for, for this for these episodes. Or this is not an episode. This is a. I think uh, it was not aired on TV. I think it was a direct to DVD thing. I think I'm not sure, but it was fun. This one though, I watched last night. Uh, well, not really. I. <laughs> Fast forwarded uh, through most of it to be honest. It's called At the Movies, and obviously they focus on the cars from Bond the movies, for example. And but it's 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 really loose too. I mean, it's not really a movie theme. They just, I mean, if if they didn't talk about the, the movies, you wouldn't have known that it's a movie, the movie car tribute. Not really. I mean, I don't know. It's just um, uh, this focus on the cars a lot too. Not a whole lot of entertainment value except for the cars and I'm not a big fan of cars why am I watching Top Gear then? well like I've said before it's a lot of cars but a lot of humor too and I, I just I, I appreciate that so uh, but I don't know this one was not for me um, but it was uh, had some entertaining parts that I, that I watched uh, then we got another Christmas movie The Ref As I say another because I bought a couple a little while back um, yeah, this is, um, I mean, I think it's a semi-black comedy. Uh, it's with Dennis Leary, Kevin Spacey, and um, basically he takes them um, hostage on Christmas Eve. And uh, then the, the relatives arrive, so he has to, Dennis Leary, that is, he has to sort of act like their doctor through the night. Um, but, yeah, it's, I thought it was pretty funny. Um, let's see. We have another Christmas movie, actually, most wonderful time of the year. This is a Hallmark movie, and I thought it started out pretty well, and uh, and you know, uh, eventually it uh, got worse, but uh, it was still entertaining. It's with Henry w Henry Winkler, and I think I think he does a good job here. It's nothing special, not not memorable. It's just a movie to uh, watch during the holidays. And nothing more. <laughs> it's it's just it's fun. But all right, so that's the DVDs. Let's see. I have four Blu-rays here now. We have um, a Clockwork Orange to begin with. Bought this quite some time ago. I have it on DVD, but um, I felt like I wanted to see it again. And may, I, I hope I'm gonna make sense with this. But there are these movies that you maybe you saw a couple years ago, and it doesn't necessarily have to be nostalgia. But you just have a fond a fond memory of them. You have this certain feeling when you think about the movie, and you really want to see it again and sort of experience that feeling again, maybe. And um, and I also thought that I would like it more this time because I thought that probably w weren't wasn't able to appreciate it fully last time. But in a way, I, maybe I was because I liked it a little less this time, which I was very surprised about. I just thought that, or well, maybe it's too deep, or maybe it's too. Um, subtle in a way for I don't know, but I thought that some stuff was very flat, and not a whole lot to appreciate in a lot of scenes. In a way, I don't know how to explain it, but I don't know. It, it is a great movie. I'm not saying anything else. It's like it, it's a great movie. I just um, I don't know. I was a little surprised at the fact that I didn't like it as much this time. Only a little bit less, but still. Um, but I do like the ending now, which last time I don't think I paid much attention to the, the way it ended, but now it's like, yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to appreciate appreciate this more in the future. I mean, um, you know, some stuff, some movies just take time. This, I've seen this a couple years ago now, 
uh, and I've actually seen it even I've seen it twice before almost twice the second time I did not finish it but anyway it's um, a great movie I don't know if there was anything else I was gonna say it feels like I missed something but I don't wanna uh, waste any more time or I don't wanna be too long-winded anyway uh, then we got uh, the Grinch or how the Grinch stole Christmas first of all I just want to mention that last time when I am unboxed this I showed you here on the back it says extra DVD of how the Grinch stole Christmas and I said that maybe that's the animated short uh, which is not uh, the the reason I thought the reason I said that was because I thought the title of this Jim Carrey adaptation or this Ron Howard adaptation or whatever uh, was only called the Grinch and that that was the title so when it said extra DVD of how the Grinch stole Christmas I was like well that's a different title that's probably the uh, cartoon, but no, since this is also called How the Grinch Stole Christmas, this just simply refers to the fact that this movie has an extra DVD with it. So that was, you know, not a little unfortunate because I would have liked to see the cartoon or the animated short, uh, but it's no big deal because uh, it's, on, it's on DVD anyway, and I'll, I'll get it next year, probably, uh, next before next Christmas, um, and watch it then. Uh, sure, I have to wait a year. I don't have to, but I don't want to watch it any other time than during Christmas. Uh, so yeah, we have the DVD here. Um, this movie is really obvious that they focus to at least 80% on the visuals here. They don't really <laughs> seem to care too much about a good plot. Well, I mean, it's it's you know they don't have to that much in a way because it's an adaptation and they have the plot already, but. You know what I mean? It's still um, they could have focused more on I don't know some other stuff than the visuals. I do happen to love. I mean, visuals is one of the main things I look for in movies, but it just felt like that was the only thing that you could really enjoy in this. I have seen it before, by the way, a few times probably, but um, I just I didn't think it was a great movie this time around. Just thought it just kind of went through the motions in a way and uh, the backdrop or well the the, uh, the atmosphere or whatever was really detailed and well made but um, you know the visuals as I said but 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 other than that I, I don't know but yeah I don't know if I'm gonna watch this again to be honest not one of those that I'm gonna pop in every Christmas thought that I would maybe like it more this time uh, but yeah it, it's still still fun but anyway Moving, uh, <laughs> switching uh, genres once again, uh, we have Manhattan by, by and with Woody, Hall Woody Allen. Um, yeah, great movie. I th I bought this along with Annie Hall, and I think I might just like this one a little bit more. Mainly because of the ending, I have to say, the last dialogue there between Woody Allen and Mariel Hemingway, who, by the way, is the granddaughter of Ernest Hemingway, which I did not know. That's pretty cool. Um, and uh, it's with Meryl Streep, Diane Keaton. Um, yeah, I just I think the end ending there is is great. Just Woody Allen's smile, basically. Actually, I talked to a friend in school, and he said that it reminded him of the, the ending in City Lights. And he said that maybe it's even a tribute by Woody Allen to Charlie Chaplin and the ending of City Lights. I had not thought about that before, but m yeah, maybe. Um, he's a big, 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 big Charlie Chaplin fan, so <laughs> I'm sure he has the ending of City Lights more clearly in his head than I do. But I can I can see that now that he, that he said it. So, uh, but I still uh, that still doesn't take away from this ending because I think this is a great ending. Um, and um, yeah, some of the dialogue not a big fan of. I'm not going to go into detail. I don't think I can be eloquent enough about it anyway. But. Um, Overall, it's a great movie, and um, yeah, that ending just uh, sort of ties it all up, or what's the expression? It just uh, <laughs> sums it all up, or it's um, just uh, makes it or makes it really makes it all uh, very. Um, uh, oh, uh, whatever! It's it's a great movie. Um, then last up we have Taxi Driver, which um, I'm happy to say I liked more this time, the second time I watched it. I do have this on DVD too, and uh, this is actually mastered in 4K. 
unfortunately I'm not very good at telling uh, video quality I mean watching a blurry and being able to say this is good quality or this this is bad quality I'm really terrible at that I have to say because uh, usually the qualities to me are pretty subtle I mean the differences between pretty good and good and great to me they, they, they sometimes are, are. Uh, I mean I've watched blu-rays where I've obviously clearly been able to tell that this blu-ray quality sucks but sometimes I'm just it's not my strong side so you may, maybe this is not what other people would say but I wasn't too impressed with the video quality except for certain the nocturnal scenes like when he's driving the cat taxi and there's there there's like a POV shot from the taxi driving on the road uh, there's uh, close-ups on the um, cab taxi cab like water rain water on it and various th certain things just certain scenes um, uh, where the quality was indeed very very good um, but not in all of it I didn't think anyway um, I love the atmosphere of this movie the atmosphere of this movie as I said the nocturnal scenes with just De Niro or um, Travis um, uh, whatever his name is um, sort of just um, looming around or whatever in, in the maybe some the cheaper uh, neighborhoods of New York um, I'm not sure if it is but it, it's in New York anyway <laughs> uh, it's just yeah it's great and a lot of a lot of details too a lot of great individual scenes that when you watch when maybe after you watch it you don't remember all of them but as you're watching it you notice several small things that are really good about it and uh, yeah I mean it's a, yeah really good movie I, um, as I said I am really happy to say that I I can appreciate it more this time this second time before I thought it was a little overrated this time I wouldn't say it's overrated after having seen it again but um, it's clear that most people still have probably see something about it that I don't see because if you if you post a forum um, poll or something and you ask about you know the best Scorsese movie it's very unlikely that this is not gonna get the most votes maybe Goodfellas can can uh, sort of be a bit of a competition in in some places but pretty much always, always this is gonna win <laughs> and um, I don't know if I think it is that superior, but it is very good. Um, so yeah, I really enjoyed it. Uh, and De Niro is great, of course. And uh, yeah, and oh, also, uh, I said that about the whole movie, but I, I'm gonna be more, more specific about one scene, which is in the ending. Which uh, kind of a spoiler, but um, I think most people have seen it anyway. But if you haven't, then. You, you, you choose yourself if you, if you want to listen to this um, but uh, in the ending there's a bit of a shootout and I remember uh, when I saw it a couple of years ago that I was very unimpressed by that I was like well this is really like uh, this is really you know aged or this is really cheaply made I remember thinking and now when I watch it again I was like is this really the same thing that I watched because this is great <laughs> really brutal you know some a guy gets his fingers shot off the Nero gets shot in the neck and before that, De Niro shoots Harvey Keitel in the stomach, and the sound that he makes, the reaction that Harvey Keitel uh, gives, is really realistic. That you rarely see when someone gets shot, you know, not being able to breathe, and just the sound he makes is really, yeah, I like that. <laughs> and just the the whole scene in the ending there, really good. Um, yeah, so I was. Uh, happy to uh, <laughs> be able to, I, I, I was happy that I enjoyed that more this time anyway this is this is for sure a movie that I'll watch you know again in the future and probably I, I, I'm, I'm gonna I'm guessing I'm, I'll, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna view this differently in the future too uh, whether it's gonna be positive or negative probably positive but who knows I mean I, I'm, I just mean that there's probably details and aspects of this that I haven't considered yet and whatever anyway um, yeah, so that's the update for this time. Actually, gonna shoot another two videos today. All of them will not be uploaded on, uploaded on the same day, but so that's not really important to to say. But anyway, uh, that's the update for this time. Thank you very much for watching, and see you next time.